the internet. It's what many of us think first when we hear the word technology. But why have these two words become so synonymous with one another? Whether you like it or not, the internet is now powering our everyday lives. Created just 50 years ago, no other invention in history has changed the way we live more than this global network of connected computers. It is this unfettered access to the sum of human knowledge, something so valuable, so important, that the United Nations has declared access to the internet a human right. In the same way you have a right to equality, your right to freedom, and your right to own property. Today, being connected is no longer a luxury, but our right as human beings. And the way we use the internet is constantly evolving and changing in new, exciting, and oftentimes unpredictable ways. But this evolution presents a new set of challenges. How is this data being used, and do you, the user, feel like your life and your data are becoming over-compartmentalized. Having to use a specific app for each function in your life can be complicated and overwhelming. And with mobile app fatigue now common discussion, and users asking to eliminate the clutter, having to use one app for your car, another one for your fitness tracker, your thermostat, your sprinkler system, they need to start working together and working for us. But getting a global network of connected computers to work for us requires that we feed it data, a complex collection of zeros and ones. And we're generating data and feeding the internet at an absolutely alarming rate. Since the early 90s, the tech industry has been calling this phenomenon big data, referring to the massive collection and storage of all of our combined zeros and ones. But in 1999, a more consumer-friendly term arose, with the all-knowing and mysterious cloud. <laughs> right? It's a global network of connected data warehouses where photos of your child's birthday may be stored next to photos of Kim Kardashian, <laughs> or worse, Kim Kardashian's big naked ass. <laughs> it's the truth though, right? <laughs> but what is all of this information and where is it coming from? Well, that's not a clear cut answer, but a majority of this data is coming from us and our devices. This new world we live in is being powered by what the tech industry is calling the Internet of Things. But really, isn't it the Internet of Everything? Everything we do throughout our day is generating data of some type. And we as a population are generating data to the tune of 2.5 quintillion bytes of data every day. Now that's enough data to fill over 10 million Blu-ray discs that if stacked on top of one another would equal the height of four, four Eiffel Towers. There's so much, in th with this new concept of the Internet of Everything, the, the uh, <laughs> Internet of Everything is on track to have over 40 billion connected devices by 2020. Now that's five times larger than our global population today. And there is so much data being generated that 90% of all data that exists today has been created in just the past two years. That's right, 90% of all data that exists today has been created in just the past two years. And a majority of this data is now coming from our connected devices. This is referring to the internet-enabled sensors you find all around you. Everything today appears to be connected, from your bathroom scales, your fitness trackers, your refrigerators, your cars, even entire cities, electrical grids, and advanced smart manufacturing have all taken part in this connected revolution. 
So through this new concept of the Internet of Everything, life today requires that you generate data on a daily, if not hourly, or minute-by-minute -minute basis. An easy example to get started with is, by show of hands, how many of you here today are wearing a fitness tracker, like a Jawbone, a Fitbit, a Garmin, or some type of smartwatch? Right? A majority of you, as you raise your hands, thank you. Well, this new category of wearable technologies relies heavily on sensor data collection. But did you know that that device is generating over 20 bytes of data per second? All to keep you informed with your number of steps, calories burned, and in some instances, even your heart rate, which is probably why you're wearing that device in the first place. Another quick example is that in 2014, nearly 100% of all cars on the market are recording and transmitting driving histories back to car manufacturers. And in some instances, they're recording and transmitting up to 25 gigabytes per hour per car. And this is whether or not you believe your car to be connected or not. They're collecting all kinds of information, from the number of times you use that automatic window switch, the number of times your windshield wipers rotate, even the number of times you press that preset button on your car radio. And they're using this information to predict failure rates, facilitate recalls, and improve quality and features in new models. But there's also sensors in that car that are benefiting you, the driver, with rear view backup cameras, curb detection, and road condition sensors all working to improve your driving experience, your safety, and the confidence you have in traveling with that vehicle with your loved ones. Now, in those two simple examples, you start to see just how much data is being generated by you on a daily basis. It's surprising, isn't it? We put a man on the moon with the equivalent of you streaming less than one second, streaming less than one second of your favorite song. It's a measly 65 kilobytes. And manufacturers are using your data in all kinds of ways. They're capitalizing on it by selling it to insurance companies, research firms, and engineers. And they're using that data to evaluate overall population health and shift the market accordingly. Now, this is starting to affect everything from our insurance premiums to the cost of goods we buy at the store every day. And our global data volume is growing at four times the growth of the global economy. So, with all of this new technology, how are manufacturers allowed to collect this information? Well, you opted into supplying it to them just by setting up that device. Remember those terms and condition page you just clicked agree on? Right? You didn't read it, let's be honest. Or that new car you just purchased? Well, that's all they needed from a legal perspective. But you as users are benefiting from this data as well, with 60% of Americans now tracking their fitness with wearable technologies. We yearn to know how many steps we've taken, how many calories we've burned, and we most certainly need that digital assistant to remind us to get up and move around. <laughs> but as a whole, fitness trackers are not making us healthier. They're not. They're simply making us aware. This is the same way all sensor devices operate. They can only inform us of the information in the data they're collecting, and it's up to us, the user, to make that change. It is now a time that we need to get all of this data and all of these devices working for us. Today, there is no common language. There is no common structure to the data coming off of all of these devices meaning there's no easy way for these devices to talk and share information with one another. They're all still tied to proprietary manufacturer systems. Now is the time. We need to come together as users, as human beings, to demand that device manufacturers create these unified languages, create these unified systems, allowing us to centralize our data and decompartmentalize our lives. 
Imagine a world where you no longer have to use your fitness app for fitness, your thermostat app for temperature control, your car app to turn on your car. Instead, one central unified app, and honestly, maybe it's not even an app, where all of your data across all of these devices can be centralized, allowing you to easily manage, schedule, and positively impact your life. It is time that we get technology working for us to empower and enhance the human experience, not complicate it.